Hello, we're back on the air with TV, film, theater, voiceover, stage star, and Hollywood legend, Larry Storch. Welcome to the show, Larry. My pleasure, thank you, and nice to be with you all. Well, thank you. I totally grew up with you, Larry. I mean, F Troop was like the greatest show I ever saw, and then all the Saturday morning stuff you did with the cartoons was just fantastic. How does it feel to be the legend that you are? Oh, you know, you're making my day now. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Nice of you to say that. And I had a lot of fun doing it, too. Am I right in knowing that you just turned 85? That's right, yes. Wow, I'll tell you, man, I, I don't feel so good at 51. And you're you're better off you know, than I am. You're more livelier than I am at 85. <laughs> well, how you do it, Larry? I don't, well, you know, the only time I really felt that I was getting up there was when I found out I was older than the Pope. <laughs> you know, that's when I kind of suspected that something was wrong. So exactly, uh, how did F Troop come about? I mean, you know, how did you get that gig? Well, you know, Forrest Tucker was responsible. I auditioned for the sergeant for his role, uh, but they, they wanted a, a guy who was about six feet tall, and, and uh, they they finally landed Forrest Tucker, and uh, he, he turned around and he said, listen, I'm going to need somebody with me to bounce some jokes off, so why not use Larry uh, Larry Storch? And they said, fine, fine. They, and that's the way I got it, through Forrest Tucker. And you guys were really friends in person, too, weren't you? Oh, we were the closest of friends. We were really buddies. And nothing made me happier than to tell the big boy a joke and see him, uh, you know, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I don't know if you were a fan of them or not, but with, uh, you know, your, your repartee that, that, you know, the jokes and everything was going back with you and Forrest, you remind me a lot of, like, the TV's version of Laurel and Hardy. Oh, my God, I don't, I'm very honored and very flattered, but, uh, but I, uh, I, I don't know, well, I, no, I don't know if we, well, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless when you, <laughs> when you compare it to Laurel and Hardy. That's okay. And, and the thing that was great, too, about you and Forrest is, is it was so cool to see the main guys from F Troop B in the, the kids' show, The Ghostbusters. How did that happen? Now, I don't know how that happened. That was a, a, a spin-off. We weren't doing any work, and this guy had the idea. And there was a gorilla running around who who needed a job, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's the way that happened. Uh, it turned out to be a very funny show, really, and we had a good time making that one. Not in, uh, not like F Troop, but uh, it was always good to work with Forrest Tucker. You've been in so many TV shows, and you've had so many TV appearances, and, and just the list. And movies, too. And the movies, the list just goes on and on. Um, and, of course, you know, you're known a lot for F Troop. Would you say F Troop was... Your favorite project, or what was the favorite project that you worked on? That was it. F Troop was a, I mean, they, it, it allowed me and everybody else in that show, Ken Berry, Forrest, uh, Frank DeCova, to be as funny as you could. They just said, just be funny, as funny as you could. And there were no uh, no holes on us. And, uh, and that... Uh, that came over the tube, didn't it? You know, one thing about it is, is TV in the classic days. How different was it doing TV back then and doing TV now? Because you did Married with Children, you did some recent stuff, recent to me anyway. But was it a lot different in the old days of doing TV compared to doing TV now? Well, I haven't done much TV now. Uh, so it's difficult for me to make a comparison between the 1967 and 68 when or 65, when F Troop was made, and uh, television now. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if I would enjoy it as much now as I did in the 60s and the 50s. Do you watch a lot of TV now? Not a great deal of it, no. It's mostly uh, mostly politics now and the news. Uh, I watch some uh, some some TV comedy, but but not much, really. What do you think of today's comedy versus the comedy that you guys did back in the past? Well, I find it. I, I think I would be a little bit shocked by myself if they let us get away with uh, with uh, some of the stuff that I see today. Uh, we, we weren't as daring in those days, but I uh, 
I think I I enjoyed it more. I would have enjoyed it more, even in those days. I think I came up at just about the right time. Absolutely. You ever get a chance to uh, hang out with any of the uh, remaining members of F Troop, like maybe James Hampton? Indeed, I do. I, I talk with Jimmy Hampton uh, about every two or three weeks. Uh, he lives down in Texas, and uh, I think we're going to be together on the Hollywood Collector Show uh, this uh, February... February Hollywood yeah. Yeah, February that's right. 15th or 16th. Yeah, what were the details on that, Jeff? Yeah, uh, we wanted to make sure we let everybody know that you're going to be appearing at the Hollywood Collector Show on February 15th and 16th out here in L.A. It's going to be, I believe, at the Beverly Garland, but you're going to be there with people like Ernest Borgnine and Ray Harryhausen and Peter Falk, who you worked on Columbia with, and it's just going to be a, a huge thing, so we want to make sure everybody out here on the West Coast goes out to see you. Now, that's something you don't do a lot of, right? I mean, you don't do a lot of conventions or... Uh, I've done, yes, when they come up, yes, if I, if I like the city too, especially, and of course I, uh, I have such a soft spot in my heart for, for Hollywood, you know. <laughs> right. Yes. I lived there for so many years. Well, you actually live out in New York now, right? Pardon me? You actually live out in New York now? Indeed I do, yes, New York. And you actually prefer it out there as far as living, or? I tell you, I, I'm equally at home in both spots. I love I love Hollywood and I love New York. They're both both different and both have a soft spot in my heart. I mean, I love. I lived up in the Hollywood Hills with herds of deer. Wow. You know, you know and uh, I, I, it was a blessing, really. Now, knowing that you had done things like F Troop and, and knowing that, uh, you know, the physical comedy and, and things like that were such a success for you, what kind of encouraged you or what made you want to get involved in doing voiceover work? Because you've been the voice of so many cartoon characters, people probably don't even realize. I'm sorry, darling. What was the question, though? Uh, <laughs> how did you, what made you want to get involved in doing voiceover work and just doing, like, voices for characters and not actually being on camera? For cartoons. For cartoons. Uh, well, I tell you, I did so many uh, voices that were uh, not famous, but characters that I that I personally uh, admire on the screen. You know, I mean, Claude Rains. Not very many people knew Claude Rains, and I was able to do him in, in various uh, various roles on uh, on commercials and things like that. Fantastic. And uh, so that's uh, and uh, because I could do the dialects. Is the only I think it's the only reason I got jobs on the stage, yeah. <laughs> you know, to be able to do dialects, uh, which was a blessing. You know, just to be able to get away with dialects was uh, open the door for me. So, in, in being from New York, are you, are you like Irish or what's your nationality? My 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 father came from Poland, and my my mother's people came from Russia, and uh, so I'm a mixture of uh, of all of those people. And that really probably helped, too, with all your dialects and everything. You know? Oh, indeed it does. And uh, also that dark Russian soul, you know, yeah. <laughs> that everybody talks about. So when, when everybody comes up to you at conventions, do they mostly remember you for F Troop? Or is there a lot of people like me that grew up with you with the Saturday cartoons with the groovy ghoulies? No, it was F Troop, I think, that, uh, that I'm mostly uh, remembered for. And I remember, too, that I was uh, almost... I was nominated for an award for comedy, and I was opposite Don Adams, who, with whom I grew up. We were the very tightest of buddies, uh, and uh, when World War II uh, broke out, you know, we both enlisted. Mm -hmm. He in the Marines and I in the Navy. But we were the tightest of buddies, and it delighted me that, uh, what a f turn of uh, events, to be both nominated for an award, and we grew up in the same block. And both wanted to be in the business when we were young kids. And I always thought it was a me. And we, when he won the award, I said, well, we kept it on the block. That's right. And you actually, uh, you got to do get smart with him too, right? <laughs> yeah, I got smart. Oh, I did a get smart with him. And uh, I played the, uh, the, the groovy goo. And they said, give us a voice. And I did. Nobody knew who I was doing at the time. But I was doing Louis Prima, uh, yeah. and I did that voice. And finally, at the end of the week, Don Adams said, I know who you've been doing. You've been doing Louis Prima right under my, while my back was turned. <laughs> but, uh, but nobody said, hey, you can't do that. 
happen, but that's what I did, and I got away <laughs> with it. And uh, it was quite successful. Oh, we have a, a request uh, from one of your biggest fans in the chat room that just love the Groovy Ghoulies. Groovy Ghoulies, that's hard to say. <laughs> uh, could you possibly do Drac? Oh, I think that, that was Frank Morgan. Really? I was doing a Frank Morgan voice for Drac. See, now, Frank Morgan... Uh, I I did a Frank Morgan show uh, in 1946, and uh, I don't think anybody knew I was. Uh, no, what was that you said? Well, he he was a Wizard of Oz, and I remember Judy saying, "No, you're a bad man." He said, "No, I'm a good man. I just so I was a wizard." <laughs> You know, it's amazing because a lot of those cartoon voices really are, are based on old Hollywood actors of that. Well, I did. I based my uh, I based my uh, my career on those old guys that nobody knew. You know, they were yeah. not famous, and you could get away with. At least I could. I got away with doing their voices. Now, when you did those cartoon voices, it was pretty much just you in a studio. I mean, were you pretty much by yourself? How's that done? You do cartoon voices. Well, do you have some of the other actors with you? Uh, three or four other actors, and you have your scripts, and uh, that, that's the way it's done. It's, it's mostly that way. Of all the movies that you did, what do you think is your favorite movie you did? I think the one I did with Tony Curtis, uh, The Great Race. That was, I love doing that. Yeah, I love that movie. That's, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you, you realize it or not, but like they had a cartoon later on called The Wacky Races, and it kind of like, I think, was taken from that. I'm not sure. No, I didn't know that, but I'm very flattered. Yes, that's a great movie. So do you think you enjoy doing TV or movies more? Oh, uh, well, they're pretty much both the same, but I think I like movies more than TV. You know, they're, they're so much the same. Uh, I, I, I'm no difference at all. I like them both, really. Although the, the stage, of course, is my number one love. I, uh, I adore doing, doing stage uh, theater work more than anything else. Absolutely. So, are you in really good health, Larry? Because man, you sound like you sound like the old Larry I know, and I I, I love that. I'm, you know, God bless you, man, for being 85 and just being as well as you are. Are you doing good in health wise, or? Yes, I am. Praise the Lord. There you go. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what is this tippy about the uh, the situation with the uh, Walk of Fame? Oh well, we wanted to make sure that we let everybody that was listening know that it's it's about time that Larry gets his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, I'm sure he's going to be humble about this, but he definitely deserves it. And we want to do something about this. Oh, how nice of you! <laughs> that would be a really that would be a dream come true. My God, the Walk of Fame. Yeah, and I guess that there there was a, a camp where they kind of started a campaign to, you know, get you nominated, and um, you were written into the nominations last year, but unfortunately, and by their stupidity, you were overlooked. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be Storch09, our campaign. We're going to get you nominated and get you a star on the Walk of Fame. So I'm going to give the address after the interview, and we want all the listeners to write in to the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. And, of course, you know, be polite and everything, but write in and let them know how much you appreciate Larry, his, you know, his career of over 70 years, and how you would love to see him get his much-deserved star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know, it's really amazing that a lot of... I you, think I may cry. Well, <laughs> that's okay, Larry. You deserve it. I believe you're, you're in good company because there's an awful lot of people that don't have a star. Like Lon Chaney Jr. doesn't have a star. He's a favorite here at the station. And people like that, it's amazing that you would think everybody has a star and they don't. Well, well I have to do something about that. <laughs> so... We have to ask you, uh, one of my daughter's favorite people, because she watched Mama's Family a lot, was, was Ken Berry. What was he like to work with in F-Troop? He was the greatest guy you can imagine. He, You see, I was very lucky. Ken Berry, Forrest Tucker. But you said Ken Berry. Do you know that Ken Berry was a great song and dance man uh, for Broadway shows, could do anything, sing, and uh, he was a... He, he kind of danced like Donald O'Connor. Yes. He was very light and very, very easy and a joy to watch dance. Yeah, he even had his own variety series doing that. I, I guess you had a variety series, too. Remember, was it a sitcom? It was a Larry Storch show. What was that all about? Well, in the summer of 1950, Jackie Gleason said, Larry, I'm going to let you take over. I'm going to I'm going to leave Art Carney with you. And... Uh, 
We're on live, Larry, so just don't use any four-letter words. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye and good luck. And so I took over for Jackie Gleason in the summer of 1950. And uh, it was a variety show, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because, I, I don't know, it's too bad they don't like have stuff like that on DVD, you know, because a lot of your stuff's on DVD, but we need to see stuff like that, too. <laughs> We have, uh, during the show, Larry, we have uh, some of the listeners that can actually submit questions um, that they may want to hear, you know, f some of your fans want to know your opinions on certain things. And one of our listeners is wanting us to ask you what you think about all of the 60s and 70s television shows being remade into movies these days. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I Why not? I mean, more, there's, I suppose, a... There's so much money to be made, and, uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I don't want to stop off at the money to be made, but there's nothing wrong with that idea. All right, here's a crazy question. I don't think they've made F Troop into a movie yet, but if they did, who would you want to play Agarn? I think the, the guy I, I would want would be Martin Short. Perfect. Wow. And yeah, would I you... think he was mentioned for, for that role one time, and... Uh, and I think he he's really a, a talented guy and a funny guy. I think Martin Short would uh, would make me proud. And I would be very mad if they didn't give you a cameo. You have to have a cameo. <laughs> uh, you know, we had some of the greatest actors. We had Bob Steele, Forrest Tucker. Uh, Melody Patterson. Melody Patterson. Oh, my God. You know, we thought she was about 22 or 23 years old. And we couldn't believe it. She was only 15 years old. Really? And, indeed. And they told us, now, boys, watch <laughs> yeah. your language. There's no lie. <laughs> yeah, but we thought she was 22 or 23. And we had to say, oh, darn, instead of, you know, oh, darn. <laughs> oh, darn. Well, you, you, oh, know, you know, Larry, now you've scarred me because I was always in love with her back then. And now I feel ashamed of myself. <laughs> A child, yeah, you're a child molester, eh? Yeah, that's right, that's me. <laughs> oh, but uh, I don't blame you. I mean, everybody fell in love with Melody Patterson. Wow. Yeah, one of the true beauties. Was there any other uh, questions there, Ted? Uh, not from the, the listeners. Well, there is a request from the listeners, and, and I don't want to keep asking you to do voices or put you out. I'm sorry. Uh, they're really wanting you to do Agar, though. Well, that gun was m more or less myself, except a little louder. Right. And I was uh, uh, an Easterner uh, uh, compared with, with, with uh, Forrest Tucker and the everybody else. They all really sounded like, like they were, were the West. But I kind of sounded like I did come from Passaic, talk out of the side of my mouth. And an Easterner thrown into the, uh, into, uh, into the cavalry. Now, where was F Troop filmed at? I know, of course, it's probably in Hollywood, but what studio? In the San Fernando Valley at, at Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. Because, you know, a lot of the studios that they had back then aren't around anymore. And, and I, I guess, you know, I don't know if that uh, particular part of Warner Brothers is still there or not. I know the main studio is. I but. think it is. We, we uh, were there about, oh, about eight or nine months ago, weren't we? Yeah, but and it's still there. Fantastic. You ever get a chance to go back and reminisce? No, not really. Do you want to? <laughs> Do I watch what? Do you want to? <laughs> no, we're the only one around now is uh, Ken Berry and uh, Jim Hampton yeah. and Melody Patterson. They're ha the last of the gang. Have you seen Melody uh, lately? Has it been a while? Or? Oh. Uh, what about, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I, I was wondering if you'd uh, recently seen Melody. When was the last time you seen Melody? I Patterson? haven't seen Melody in about, in about two years. Wow. That's amazing. I did not know she was 15. That, that's some great trivia. <laughs> oh, my God. And she, she got more, more mail, more phone calls on that set. Oh, I can imagine. You know. When you were on uh, Married with Children, uh, of course, you know, some of the younger cast we really loved, which is Kelly Bundy and Bud Bundy, uh, were they even aware of who you were? I mean, because, you know, that was not their generation. Did they know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we all knew who we were. And uh, what a nice cast they were. Really? I got a lot of mileage out of being on that show, Married with Children. So you could have had another career, Larry, because, like, you had the, the, the Larry Stewart School of Acting, and you could have actually done that. <laughs> uh, that yeah, that was a funny show. I, I really had a good time. So what would be your advice to anybody that, that wants to 
become not just an actor, but become an icon like you have? I know it's a hard question, but what, what do you advise people that want to get into to TV and show business? You know, I know really so no, no advice you can give anybody like that. I think just to get into the business and to work at it as hard as you can, you know, to, that's what I did. Of course, I came up in the, uh, in the late 30s. So, and it was altogether different then. There, there were nightclubs all over the country, and there was vaudeville. If you ask anybody today what was vaudeville, they can't, the word gets by them. But it was four shows a day, right. four vaudeville shows a day, and four movies a day. And this was all over the country. And so it was uh, the most marvelous time for show business, I think. It was I think. So expensive. How, vaudeville shows were like, what, were they like 50 cents or something like that? Of course. Yeah. Of course. And now you got to take out a loan to go to the movie, you know? It's <laughs> terrible. That's quite right. So let me ask you, do you ever watch your old shows? I know a lot of your stuff is out on DVD. F Troop is out on DVD and the Groovy Ghoulies. And oh, yes. Stuff. When I know I'm on, I can't get enough of my show. <laughs> oh, right. No, I like to hear that. I can't stand these actors that, that like, I don't watch myself. Baloney, I'll watch whatever I do. If I hear any funny thing is when I watch it, I think to myself, why did I do it that way? I could have done it funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry, one of one of our listeners' favorite uh, series that was on, and they want to know what it was like to work with the star of this, was called Jack the Night Stalker, and you did an episode of that with Darren McGavin. What was it like working with Darren? With Darren McGavin? Mm-hmm. Oh, he was a very... Now, wait a minute. We're talking about uh, Love Boat. Are we? Well, no, Cold Tech the Night Stalker with Darren. You were in Love Boat, too. I mean, you've done everything. <laughs> well, was, isn't Darren McGavin the same fellow who's captain on, on Love Oh, oh no. But I don't know. I don't remember too much about working with Darren McGavin. Okay, well, this was a series where it was kind of like supernatural, and it was produced by Dan Curtis, and, and Darren McGavin would be a reporter that would go out and investigate uh, psychic things and paranormal. So it might have been a, a boo-boo. I don't remember that, that period. Boo-boo. Okay, well, might have, sometimes the Internet Movie Database has boo-boos, too. So, But Love Boat, you did a few of those. I mean, do you like doing that? I mean, that was hell. That oh. had to be fun being on that boat. The funny thing was, we used to say about Love Boat, uh, there was nothing like Love Boat. I mean, when you think about all of those women, uh, the swimming pool, uh, Larry, well, you keep mentioning the women. The music, the women, and mind you, we were still tied up with the dock. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get a feeling you were a ladies' man, Larry. You keep mentioning the women. No, no, I uh, I was never a leading man, I, uh, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about, what about uh, Love American Style? Now, I really love that. You did some of those. Oh, yeah, they were all fun. They were all fun. Love American Style. Now, who did I do? That? Well, I, there were so many of those that I did that I, I really can't remember all of the uh, the actors. I don't even think they have that on DVD. They should put that out. I don't know why they don't. But once again, Tiffany, tell everybody about the uh, collectible show that Larry's going to be at here. Well, we want to make sure that everybody uh, heads on out to the Hollywood Collector Show. It's going to be on February 15th and 16th, so coming up here in two weekends. Um, and you're going to be appearing there. And from what I understand, uh, your table, you're going to have a table, of course. You're going to be doing autographs and everything. And um, people that come up to your table and make a purchase actually get a little free giveaway. I guess uh, you guys are going to be giving away to anybody who makes a purchase a, uh, either a free Groovy Ghoulies or a free Ghostbusters press kit, which, which, act, which was actually unavailable to anybody, to the mass public. Wow. So that's kind of cool. So i got to ask, Larry, when you're there at your table, are you going to wear Agarn's hat? Yes, and I am with an Indian arrow right through it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you don't get tired of wearing that, huh? Uh, pardon me? You don't get tired of wearing that hat, never, huh? Never, never. You don't have, like, the urge to have somebody hit you in the head with a hat all the time, do you? Uh, no, no, I, I had enough of that. <laughs> do, do fans ever ask to do that? Oh, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, we, they want me to take a picture of me, with me hitting them over the head with my hat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you so much for being on, Larry, and, and I, I'm just totally blown away and I'm honored to have you here because you you are a true legend and I just want to thank you for making my childhood better for growing up with Larry Storch and being entertained by you all these years how many years were you in show business actually well I started in uh, the late 30s in about 90 I was in it well let's say in 1940 1940 
So that's like what to do the math. <laughs> well, according to uh, according to his MySpace page, he's been in the business for seventy plus years. So wow. That's about right. Yeah. A legacy. I mean, when I said you were a legend when I introduced you, it's it's not a joke, and we were so honored to have you on the show as a guest. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I guess for for doing it for seventy years, you must have liked it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can do nothing. I can do nothing else. <laughs> well, I don't want to. Well, now's the time of your life, and you can really enjoy yourself, you know, because it's got to be great sitting back and watching your stuff and being able to talk to the fans and just feeling their love, you know. It really is a blessing, I tell you, it is, you know, to, uh, I never went to school, never went to school, and I, uh, I was terrified at math, and uh, that sort of thing, and just to be able to earn a, a living way back, way back then, was a blessing, you know, no schooling, and, uh, but the, uh, the principal in, uh, the school said, listen to my mother, let him go out and be on stage if, if the hippie you can get a job on stage now and then let him learn on the on what he's going to do now yeah and so at uh, 17 i was uh, in nightclubs you know that's the way i got started i just dropped out of school and went work into uh into nightclubs well from what i understand back in the old days of tv like they don't. They didn't pay as much as they do actors now. I mean, it was pretty slim back then, wasn't it? Or it was pretty oh, good money. You have no. I mean, we thought we were. Uh, I remember Forrest Tucker came into our into, into everybody's dressing room. He said, "Now listen, stand in back of me. I'm going to go in there and ask the producers for a raise of two hundred dollars a week." Or we said, "Oh my God, you're rocking the boat!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. Hey, and when he came back, he said, you won't believe this, but we got $200 a week. Oh, oh my. You know, it was unheard of. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you know, compared to the salaries now, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's out of sight. Holy cow. And then, uh, I don't know, do you still get residuals from F Troop? I mean, do you get a check? No, 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 no more of those. Oh, that's sad. It really is. Yeah. It's too bad of that. But, they, you know, unfortunately, they've got a lot more. Uh, laws that, that SAG has helped pass where, you know, actors are compensated a little bit more now than they were in the early days, you know? Right, right, right. Okay, Larry, thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. And, and like I said, thank you for entertaining me all my life here. How nice of you. It was, it's been my pleasure. Good night, Larry. Good night, Larry. God bless you. Okay, thank you, kids. Bye-bye. Take care, and I'll see you at the Hollywood Collector Show.